sticker style decals, we all know them, we all more or less hate them. There's nothing quite like opening up a brand new box of Gunpla, taking out the runners, getting a nice good look at the decals and just thinking to yourself, damn. I wish I had some water slides. Out of the kits we get from Bandai that include decals, the most common type you'll see are sticker style decals, which is unfortunate because they really suck. I'm gonna be totally honest, these are probably the worst type of decals, especially when we have dry transfer and water slides contending with this. Sure, they might be the quickest to apply, but is that trade-off really worth it considering the ugly, huge sticker border that accompanies the edge of all of these decals? I don't think so. The only time they look remotely good is against plain white plastic, and even then, you can still see the edge, they still don't look good. Of course, you could always go on eBay or some third-party website to order some third-party water slide decals specifically for the kit you're building, but if you're anything like me, impatient, you don't want to do that. Who needs to wait for shipping when you've already got what you need right in front of you? So if you are like me, and you still want to use your sticker style decals, but you don't want them to look ugly, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your sticker style decals look amazing. So as previously identified and as noticed by anyone who's ever used sticker style decals, the big drawback to these is the border around those decals that stands out pretty noticeably. But how do we get rid of that, you might ask? Dry transfers don't have the borders at all, so it's not a problem there. Water slides, you can use Mr. Mark Softer to melt the edges. And if you got stickers, well, you're just kind of screwed. Not necessarily, though. There's one very simple method that's very easy to learn that you can do at home to instantly improve the look of your sticker style decals, and the only thing you need is an X-Acto knife. I'm assuming that many of you who are into the modeling hobby have one of these at home. Many people even just have one laying around the house if you have a sibling or a parent who's into crafts. If you don't have one though, they're available pretty much anywhere. Walmart, Amazon, hobby stores. It's pretty easy to find an X-Acto knife. All we're going to be doing is taking these stickers and this X-Acto knife, and we're going to be manually trimming those edges off of the decals. Now I know what you're thinking, that might be really hard because a lot of these decals are tiny. Some people might not have the most steady hand and some people might just not have the patience in general. But I'm here to show you the right way to do it. I don't have the steadiest hands either. My hands are shaking all over the place like a crazy person whenever I try to do minute details. So you can rest assured that if I can do it, you can do it. I mean, I'd never even done this technique until fairly recently. Here is my Master Grade Justice Gundam that I actually just finished up about a day or two ago. This project was my very first time trimming up stickers. It was not as time consuming as I had initially thought and it was not as hard either and I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Now it might sound very simple to just go in and cut off the edges, but there's a couple problems with that. Number one, it's very tricky to cut straight lines without cutting into the decal itself. Number two, just dragging your X-Acto knife, no matter how sharp along these decals, I don't care who you are, I don't care how steady your hand is, it's gonna make the decal slide all around. And at that point, it's basically just impossible to handle considering how small these things are. There's a very specific technique that I'm going to teach you. I probably shouldn't be pointing at the camera with the X-Acto knife. I don't know if the YouTube ad revenue system is gonna flag that as like some kind of threat. But there's a very specific technique that I'm going to teach you that will prevent you from damaging the actual decal itself getting a very clean cut and not risking the decal slipping around at all. Let's get right into it. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna be using the Master Grade Freedom 2.0. This is just a kit that I have sticker decals for that I have not put any of them on yet. Let's get this out of the way real quick. Here's the decal sheet we're gonna be using. I'm going to be trimming out these two specifically. Well, one of these I'm going to put on without trimming. One of them I'm going to trim up so we can kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. You guys can see the results. Of course, we need our X-Acto knife. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have as sharp of a blade as possible for the best cleanest results. I recommend getting a pack of these. They're very cheap. You can find them on Amazon. That's where I got these. They're just exacto blade replacements. Pretty cheap and you do get a lot of blades in here. Just unscrew that. Take the old blade out and put the new one in just like so. Now we're ready to cut. So the one thing that you should keep in mind is we're not doing like a dragging cut. What we're going to be doing, think of like a jigsaw. If you know what that is, the blade goes up and down. We're going to basically be poking a ton of holes throughout the edge of this and what this will essentially do is create a perforation around the details of the decal. Basically something like you'd see on the top of a cardboard cereal box that lets you rip along an edge very easily. It's going to be a little bit harder for me to do because I'm behind the camera. I'm working around my camera stand but hopefully I'll be able to do a good enough example for the video. Just start on a corner like this, press down and it does help to have one of these self-healing cutting mats so you can push 
into it without damaging the surface underneath. Push down just like that. Doesn't really matter the angle, just kind of try to have it in between straight up and down and what would this be, like a 45 degree angle? Push down and you can drag it a little bit as you're pulling up. Just make a ton of holes along the edge and you should go slow at the start, but once you get the hang of it, you can go a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna do the rest of this kind of over here just so I can see it better. I'm gonna speed this up and then we'll come back when I'm done. So that is it. I've trimmed out the whole uh, edge of the decal. I think I went a little too close and maybe cut off a little bit of that decal, but you know, for the sake of demonstrative purposes, the important thing is that you know to do that poking technique instead of dragging. Now I did drag the blade at certain parts. You can get away with that on larger decals because they have more surface area to stick to the sticker backing. But in general, you should practice getting down that poking technique because that's what's gonna help you for every decal. You'll be able to cut out even these tiny decals right here. I did that for the Justice Gundam and it looks so much better. So let's get these two peeled off. I'll show you what to do with these and we'll do a comparison. Well, I guess first I need to see where these even go. Let's reference our decal sheet here. This would be decal number one. So number one right here, it goes on the wings. Just remove the backpack here to make it a little easier. So it looks like they're gonna go right here. This will be perfect because it's dark plastic, which is where those stickers will kind of show up most. That out of the way, you're going to take your X-Acto knife, get at the edge of this decal here and just kind of pull it up make sure that you don't tear it larger decals you know just be careful now the rest of the stuff that you trimmed will more often than not come up with the decal but that's not a problem because we created that perforation so let's just get that applied just like that run your finger along it just to rub it in as good as possible and you can clearly see you can you can see how bad that looks that sticker border on there but since we created that perforation what we can do lift that up be careful not to scratch the plastic and that perforation that we created should create a weaker bond between the edge of the decal itself and the border that we're trying to remove. I guess what I mean by that is the decal itself sticking to the plastic is stronger than the border sticking to the outside of the decal. So you can just kind of pull it up like so. It might not come off all at once. I recommend you get a pair of sharp tip tweezers. I don't have a pair of those on hand. My last pair broke or maybe I lost them. I can't remember. I just don't have them anymore. So I just kind of use these hobby nippers. Peel that off just like that and you just kind of go at it in sections. Just peel it off one section at a time. It might not all come off perfectly, but the important thing is, is you made that perforation, which will separate the border from the decal itself. So there we have it. That is all cleaned up and that already looks so much better. You can see I kind of I kind of messed up in some areas here. Again, I was kind of cutting way farther away from my face than I normally do. You kind of want to get like right up in there to be able to see the lines that you're making. But the principle here still remains the same in the fact that we managed to remove that border that was sticking out over here. Now you can kind of see in here, there is still that sticker remaining. If you want to go through and trim that up while it's on the part, you can, although I don't recommend it because, you know, if you slip, you do really run the risk of damaging the plastic because you are cutting into it. So let's get that other sticker on there and we can do a side-by-side -side comparison to show you how much of a difference this really makes. So there we have it. I hope you guys can see that. I've rubbed it into the best of my ability. I hope the camera's kind of capturing it because in person, and it definitely is very visible even from a distance you can see the giant border left by the sticker here and on this one we have absolutely none now when you peel that sticker border off after placing on the piece it might leave a little bit of residue leaving a line here where the outline used to be all you have to do just take your thumb and run it along the piece and that will get rid of it. So that's it. That's all you really have to do to improve the look of your kits with sticker style decals on them. And I know some can argue that might be a lot of work. Maybe it's a lot more work than you're willing to put in, but hey, it should go without saying that you get out what you put in when you're making something like this. If you want your kit to look good, you might have to go the extra mile sometimes. And it really is something that you're just gonna have to practice and get a feel for to get it right. It's not super difficult right out the gate, but there is a bit of a learning curve to it. I struggled a decent bit with the first few decals that I cut out when making the justice over here but as I did it more and more it really started to kind of come to me so now I'd like to pass the ball to you and challenge you to do this with your own stick
stickers. Maybe take a kit you haven't decaled yet or take the kit you're working on right now. Trim up a couple of those stickers, take a picture of your work and send it to me on Twitter. Just post a picture and tag me at UC Gundam. <clears throat> Shameless plug. And that's about it. I hope you guys found the video helpful. Uh, if you did find it helpful, please subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, I do Gunpla reviews and infrequent tutorials. I mean, you guys really seem to like the last tutorial video, so hopefully you like this one too. I've gotten a lot of requests to also do a panel lining tutorial. I'm getting familiar with the Tamiya panel line accent color yet. I don't feel comfortable teaching people how to use this because I'm still new to it, but maybe down the line the future expect a tutorial on using this stuff too. Anyways, I don't really have anything else to say. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons, of course, for continuing to support me, and peace.